hello hi everyone welcome back to the channel so today in this video lecture will be like solving this problem tree matching so basically we are uh, we are doing we have we are continuing in this uh, tree series and we have learned about a few tree algorithms like how to perform depth, depth first search how to perform breadth first search and we're solving some problems on trees and this is the second problem in the series this problem called tree matching and uh, this is again a pretty easy and standard problem we are given a tree consisting of n nodes so we have a tree with n nodes a matching what is a matching we are like given a term matching here a matching is a set of edges where each node is an end point of at most one edge means we have to find the maximum number of edges in a matching so basically we we want to find like the largest set of edges such that each node is basically an end point of at most one edge means all of those edges are separated from each other they are like we do not have any common node between those edges like let's understand this with an example so we are given this tree with five nodes here and the, num the nodes are numbered from 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the tree is rooted at node number 1. Now we want to find the largest matching, means the set of edges having, uh, like the edges do not have any common node. So one of such set is, sets, uh, sets is this one. Like this edge consisting of node 1 and 2. And this edge consisting of node 3 and 5 we can see that both these edges are separated from each other all of the nodes here in the first edge 1 to 2 and on the second edge 3 to 4 3 to 5 observe each node each node is basically an end point of at most one edge right we do not have any other edge going out or going in from a single node and that's the thing that's the purpose and the answer for this test case is two we have we can find two maximum such edges we cannot find any other edge because if i let's say take this edge one and three then we would have one as a common node for these two edges which is not allowed if i take this edge three and four then i would have three as a common common node for these two edges which is not allowed so the best answer we can achieve for this test case is 2 right now how we can solve this problem what is the strategy to solve this problem like think about it what we want what is the intuition is the intuition is simple once we have like included an edge once we have included an edge, let's say I have included 1 and 2, then I must have, I must, I should sub mark these nodes somewhere so that when I visit this node 3, then I find this node 1 as marked so that I do not add this edge as a valid edge in the tree matching set. So if I include an edge into the set, then I must mark it. And that's the idea. To do so, what I'm going to do is, I'm simply perform, I will simply perform a depth first search from node number 1. Now from node number 1, move to the child node, which is node number 2. And now, node number 2 do not have any child node, so just move back. So while we move back, what we're going to see is we check if we can include this edge or not like this child parent set 2 and 1 the set of 2 and 1 now initially they are unmarked because we are just performing a plain depth for search so we start a dfs dfs1 this recursively calls itself for second node now it will again here from node number two i will come back so while i come back what i am checking is whether node number two 
and node number one. We have definitely we have an edge between these nodes. Now I'm checking whether it is included or not. How I can check it? Either I use a set. So use a set where I insert the edges actually. So to do so, what I'm going to do is I find that initially the set is empty. So I push, so I push this pair one and two into the pair into the set. Okay, so this edge is included, the edge between one and two. Now move back to the root node. Recursively call the DFS function. So this function is out. Now call the function for node number three. So DFS three here. <laughs> now from node number three, recursively call the DFS for five. DFS five. So move here. Okay. Now from node number five, I cannot move to any node because this is the ending node. Okay. Now backtrack back to the parent node, which is node number three. And while I'm moving back, I also need to check that whether I can include this edge or not. So how can I check it? I can check if I have any pre existing pair with three in it or five in it. If we have any pre existing pair, which includes three or five, then we cannot insert this edge into the into our set. Otherwise, we can always insert this edge into the set because it is a valid edge, obviously. So how can I check it? How can I check that three and five is not the part of any previously included edge? Okay. So to do so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a array. I'm going to use a visited array or array to mark the nodes, which I have included. So for this example, the array will be one, two, three, four, five like this. So previously I included this edge between one and two. So I mark these two nodes as visited. Now, here I'm trying to include this edge, the edge between three and five. Can I include this edge? Let's check whether three or five are marked or not. We can see that three and five are not marked. Since they are not marked, I can include this edge. While I'm including this edge, I also have to increment my answer by one. So initially I included this edge one and two. So the answer I had was one. Now I have also included this edge between three and five. So the answer becomes two. The answer becomes two. So one plus one becomes two. Now from node number three, move to DFS four, move to this node, which is node number four. Now here, check whether now while moving back from node number four to node number three, check whether can I include this edge or not the edge three and four. And the answer is no, because we can see that node number three is already visited. So that means this is a common node. So if I include this edge into the set, that means node number three becomes a common edge. So which violates the condition, which is not a pre matching, right? So we can't include this edge. Fine. Now move back to node number one. Again, I am moving back to node number one. That means I can check this edge, check for the edge one, for the edge between one and three. Can I include this edge? Let's see whether one or three are marked or not. We can see that both of the nodes are marked. That means it is not possible to include this edge into the tree matching set. So I simply uh, ends my DFS right here at the root node, right? And finally, we have answer as two for this test case. So that's how we solve this problem. Pretty easy problem. Just perform the usual depth first search strategy. And while you perform the depth search strategy, when you are backtracking to the parent nodes, keep track of the edge, keep track, like if you are including the current edge between the parent and child, then just check whether any of the node is previously included or not, or previously marked or not. If it is marked, then we can't include this edge. Otherwise we can include this edge, right? So I hope you got the solution. Uh, this is one of the solutions to this problem. Another solution uses dynamic prog dynamic programming approach, which we'll solve later in this course. 
So for this video, we'll just focus on this depth first strategy. So let's jump to the code implementation part. <laughs> okay, so here I'm taking in the input. So this is n, the number of nodes. This is the graph adjacency matrix, uh, adjacency list. Here I'm taking in the edges. I'm preparing the graph. Then here I am basically declaring a array done or this is basically a boolean visited array used to mark the nodes for which the edge has been included, right? If I have included between included any edge, then the endpoints, the nodes which connects that edge are marked visited in this array. Okay. And then I'm calling this TFS function for the node which is root node, which is node number one passing in the adjacency list as well as the parent node for node number one. So for node number one, I'm passing zero as the parent node. Why? Because node number one do not have any parent node. So this pre or parent node is required so that I do not revisit the current node again. <laughs> okay. I do not revisit the parent node again. I just visit the child node. So let's just iterate over the child nodes. <coughs> child node for the current node. Here, if the current child is not equal to the pre, means it's not the parent, it's actually the child. In that case, recursively call the same function for this child node, pass in the adjacency matrix. Now, when you backtrack from the depth for search, when you back, when you are backtracking actually, then you will basically mark the edge between this child and between this node. If it is not already there in the set. So first check if the, if any of the node is there in the set, if any of the node is there in the set, <coughs> is not there in the set. So if any of the node is not there in the set, then basically mark these nodes as visited. And increment the answer by one. And initialize the answer here at the top by zero. So in this fashion, uh, I will have my answer prepared. This answer will include the number of edges which I have included in the set. Fine, and finally I uh, print my answer here. So let's just execute the code. <laughs> okay, so it's executed, the answer is two, and uh, that's all. We just have to perform a depth first strategy, and uh, the problem is solved. And that's all for this video. If you really like the video, then hit the like button, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. And I will continue uploading these videos because I love doing so. And I hope to see you all in my next video.